What's up with everybody? It's me and Moyo B. I'm Nicole. And we're back in it with some more reaction videos. Oh man, solutions and ideas. Where are all the aliens? The yeah. Fermi Paradox too, baby. Part two. Finishing two, up the uh, part one. Yeah, because the first one was talking about all the other like alien like civilizations out there in the world. Right. The possibility. About we all don't the planets know. and everything. Yeah, because mm -hmm. there's like so many galaxies. How many million galaxies? I don't remember. Something? There were so many. I definitely don't have a lot. It's hard to keep up. It's hard to keep up, man. And a ton of possible planets that so there could be life on and all uh, that jazz. So. It's crazy to think about. We finna die right into it, baby. Mm -hmm. 10,000 stars for every grain of sand on Earth in the observable universe. We know that there might be trillions of planets, so where are all the aliens? This is the Fermi Paradox. If you want to know more about it, watch part one. Here, we look at possible solutions to the Fermi Paradox. So, will we be destroyed or does a glorious future await us? Oh yeah, because they talked about all the filters that you have to go through. Maybe. Yeah. Space oh, yeah. travel is hard. Although possible, it's an enormous challenge to travel to other stars. Massive amounts of material have to be put into orbit and assembled. A journey of maybe thousands of years needs to be survived by a population big enough to start from scratch. And the planet might not be as hospitable as it seemed from afar. It was already extremely hard to set up a spaceship that could survive the trip. An interstellar invasion might be impossible to put off. Also, consider time. The universe is very old. On Earth, there's been life for at least 3.6 billion years. Intelligent human life for about 250,000 years, but only for about a century have we had the technology to communicate over great distances. Yeah. There might have been grand alien empires that stretched across thousands of systems and existed for millions of years, and we might just have missed them. There might be grandiose ruins <laughs> rotting away on distant worlds. 99% of all species on Earth have died out. It's easy to argue that this yeah, will be our fate sooner or later. Intelligent life may develop, spread over a few systems, and die off over and over again. But galactic civilizations might never meet. So maybe it's a unifying experience for life in the universe to look at the stars and wonder, where is everyone? Yeah. But there yeah. is no reason to assume aliens are like us, or that our logic applies to them. It might just be that our means of communication are extremely primitive and outdated. Imagine sitting in a house with a Morse code transmitter. Yeah. You'd keep right. sending messages, but no nobody would, would answer, that. and yeah. you'd feel pretty lonely. Maybe yeah. we're still undetectable for intelligent species, and will remain so until we learn to communicate properly. And even if we met aliens, we might be too different to be able to communicate with them in a meaningful way. Imagine the smartest squirrel you can. No matter how hard you try, you won't be able to explain our society to it. Yeah, yeah. After all, from the squirrel's perspective, a tree is all that a sophisticated intelligence like itself needs yeah. to survive. Yeah, yeah. So, humans cutting down whole forests is madness. But we don't destroy forests because we hate squirrels, we just want the resources. The squirrel's wishes so and the madness. squirrel's survival are of no concern to us. A type 3 civilization in need of resources may treat us in a similar way. They might yeah. just evaporate our oceans to make collecting whatever they need easier. One of the aliens might think for a second, oh tiny little apes, they build really cute concrete structures. Oh well, now they're dead before uh, activating warp dang. speed. But if there is a civilization out there that wants to eliminate other species, it's far more likely that it will be motivated by culture rather than by economics. And anyway, it would be more effective to automate the process by constructing the perfect weapon. A self-replicating space probe made from nanomachines. They operate on a molecular level incredibly fast and deadly, with the power to attack and dismantle anything in an instant. You only need to give them four instructions. One, find a planet with life. Two, disassemble everything on this planet into its component parts. Three, use the resources to build new space probes. Four, repeat. A doomsday machine like this could render a galaxy sterile in a few million years. Hmm. But why would you fly light years to gather resources or commit genocide? The speed of light is actually not very fast. If someone could travel at the speed of light, it would still take 100,000 years to cross the Milky Way once, and hey, you'll probably travel crazy. way slower. There might be the way more enjoyable fast, right? things than destroying civilizations and building empires. An interesting concept is the matryoshka brain, a megastructure surrounding a star. 
a computer of such computing power that an entire species could upload their consciousness and exist in a simulated universe. Potentially, one could experience an news. eternity of pure ecstasies without ever being bored or sad. A perfect life. If built around a red dwarf, this computer could be powered for up to 10 trillion years. Sure. Who would want to conquer the galaxy or make contact with other life forms if this were an option? All yeah. these solutions to the Fermi Paradox have one problem. We don't know where the borders of technology are. We could be close to the limit or nowhere near it. And super technology awaits us, granting us super immortality, yeah. transporting us to other galaxies, elevating us to the level of gods. Yeah, one thing day. we do Drag have to ball. acknowledge is that we really don't know anything. Humans have spent more than 90% of their existence as hunter-gatherers. 500 yeah. years ago, we yeah. thought we were the center of the universe. 200 years ago, we stopped using human labor as the main source of energy. 30 years ago, we had apocalyptic weapons pointed at each other because of political disagreements. Yeah. In the galactic timescale, we are embryos. We've come far, but still have a long way to go. The mindset that we really are the center of the universe is still strong in humans, so it's easy to make arrogant assumptions about life in the universe. Mm. But in the end, there's only one way to find out, right? The universe. Uh, I mean, he said we could be like infants, really. If you think about yeah, it. Yeah, he's like, we're like embryos. Embryos, yeah, embryos. Because we're kind of new to the world in a large extent. You know, we're new to technology. Yeah. It, it's more of looking at the fact that most of our technology has come in the last, what, 100 years? Yeah, or, rapid. It was really know, fast. A little over a century. But the universe has been around for millions of billions. years. Billions yeah. of years. Yeah. So it's like, who's to say there wasn't societies out there way before us that are way more advanced? Yeah, because they've, it's way more advanced. Right, because yeah. they've been around a lot longer. Yeah. But, I mean, we don't know that. Or like he said, what if there were... And we didn't have the technology to find them, and then they're now extinct and gone, and yeah. we're here. Like, I mean, who yeah. knows? Like, any there's like any possibility, really. Anything's possible. Yeah, I know you said let's say it was aliens, and we probably won't even better communicate with them and stuff. Just right. like how I was trying to communicate with a squirrel. Right. You know, it just. I mean, we don't know. You know, no. maybe you could, but yeah, it could be that they're so for much further advanced than us, or just completely different. Yeah. I mean, they could not be anywhere near human they could just be some completely different animal life form yeah. or something so why would we be, you know like well, they could be like um like humanoids like we are like humans but they like they look like us but right. they still completely different yeah you know i mean we can't communicate really with the animals we have on our own planet who's to yeah. say we communicate with some alien life form i mean yeah there's just no knowing so it's interesting to think about for sure it's kind of mind-boggling because the possibilities yeah. are endless in this situation yeah. and you know and you know, like i said the universe is just keep expanding and expanding mm -hmm. and expanding it's like even if we try you know with the speed of light we still won't be like you know you know reach the end of the universe because oh, yeah. and the speed of light is so quick you know it can run around <laughs> the earth like like what i don't know in Did seconds. It say seven seconds? times in a second yeah or and that's it's fast it's right but fast. it still takes thousands or hundreds of thousands, thousands of years, years to get across the milky way galaxy yeah that's just the galaxy itself we're not yeah. talking about going into the um universe into the other galaxies yeah. and that's why i think in the part one he had said like it's yeah. basically impossible it would take billions of light years yeah and of that's light just years. never gonna happen think about it one light year can circle earth seven times in a second and it's at billions of light years. Yeah, I... That is crazy. You can't even fathom, fathom that. <laughs> like, oh, my God, you know. And I mean, it's like damn near impossible, pretty much. I mean, you would have to set up some kind of civilization that humans would be able to last for billions of years to yeah. be able to get to yeah. another galaxy. Yeah. Uh, you, your, none of us would be able to do it. It would have to be, you know, our centuries-long... Yeah, but the problem is humans only like live to be like well, no average like seven years old. 80. That's what I'm saying. You'd have to set up some kind of civilization on a ship that would last billions of years. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, that yeah, your yeah. Th you know, but you would ancestor need ancestor would make it. But you would need way. a huge ship though for that. You know, exactly. You would need that's an earth. Why, you would need an Earth-like ship, right? And that's why he said we'll never be able to get there because yeah. to do. I mean, you can't say never because yeah. anything's possible. I guess, well, yeah. But, I mean, think about. It. If you think about how far, he like, that in the video, though, he was how, like, how far advanced, like, technology has advanced in a mm -hmm. short amount of time, matter how technology will be in 500 years from now, yeah. how advanced it's going to be, right. 
you know. And I don't know. Maybe they'll be able to figure out travel that's faster than the speed of light, but I find that hard to you believe. You think about like a thousand years ago. What if a thousand years ago people had the technology we had? Did we be so much more advanced? Right. So, you know. Mm-hmm. I don't know. This is crazy. Man. It's all very interesting and quite crazy to think about, for yeah, sure. Man. So. Yeah. But, but... <laughs> We definitely enjoyed it, man. Mm-hmm. Great information and great channel. Make sure to subscribe to this channel. Yes. If you want to support our channel, make sure to leave us a video request by clicking on the link to our stream lab. It's going to be in our description. Leave a video links there, too. And also keep the video in 12 minutes. Mm-hmm. Don't forget to subscribe. Thumbs it up. Turn on notifications. It should be more of a B. And a We're going to catch you on the next video. Awesome. Peace and love, baby.